the victorious Carranza prepared to assume control and rebuild the country. But his agenda for the nation would have to wait. His coalition was about to fall apart. Pancho Villa broke with Carranza and occupied Mexico City. Emiliano Zapata came to the capital to meet Villa. For a week, the city belonged to their revolutionaries. Zapata's agrarian guerrillas patronized Sanborns, the cafe of the aristocrats. His officers posed in the courtyard of the National Palace. Inside the palace, Zapata and Villa discussed forming an alliance. Villa asked Zapata to join him in fighting Carranza and Obregón. Zapata agreed to fight Carranza, but only in Morelos, for his people and their land. The Zapatistas left the contest for Mexico to the Northerners. The war that followed was the cruelest chapter of the revolution. The generals who had once fought together against Diaz and Huerta were now merciless with one another. became a duel between Pancho Villa and Carranza's champion, Álvaro Obregón. The military genius of Obregón prevailed. In one decisive battle, Pancho Villa lost thousands of men. Obregón lost 140. By late 1915, the struggle was over. Carranza was in control of the country. The United States recognized him as the legitimate president of Mexico. Pancho Villa was outraged. He hit back at the United States and earned his reputation as an outlaw. On March 9, 1916, the little border town of Columbus, New Mexico, was the scene of wanton bloodshed and destruction. The notorious Mexican revolutionary and bandit, Pancho Villa, had led 600 of his famed Dorado cavalry in a cruel and senseless attack on the little American town. Two hours the raid ago, drew an instant response from Washington. General Black Jack Pershing was chosen to lead the expeditionary force of 10,000. Their target was an elusive one. Villa, the man in the white suit smoking a cigar, had the advantage of being on his home grounds. U.S. troops chased the elusive Villa around northern Mexico for almost a year, sometimes tangling with Carranza's army. Carranza finally ordered Pershing out of Mexico. So Wilson issued the official recall of Pershing and his men. The expedition paraded back across the border at Columbus to the accompaniment of the music of a band and cheering crowds. Although all agreed it had been wonderful training for the combat force soon to be sent overseas in the great global war, history recorded it as truly a no-decision fight. Soon afterward, Pancho Villa accepted a comfortable retirement and his own hacienda. President Carranza could now turn his attention to his plan for a new nation. His first step was to call a convention to draft a constitution. Carranza, tuvo el genio de... Carranza had the insight to gather all the revolutionary groups in a convention to draft a new constitution for Mexico. This constitution is the foundation of our political system and embodies the goals of our revolution some of which have yet to be realized. The 1917 Constitution recognized Madero's anti-re-election stand, limiting presidents to a single term. 
it recognized Carranza's nationalism, placing oil and other resources under state control. And it recognized Zapata's demand for land reform. But for Zapata, the Constitution was no more than a promise. Carranza had little interest in redistributing land. So Zapata continued fighting. Tired of ambushes and raids against government outposts, Carranza approved a plan to kill Zapata. The trap was sprung in 1919, and Zapata died in a hail of bullets. Zapatistas consigned Carranza to hell for the killing of their leader. Within a year, Carranza himself fell victim to a plot endorsed by his right-hand man, General Alvaro Obregón. Pancho Villa was gunned down three years later. All the leaders of the revolution met violent death. Madero, Zapata, Carranza, and Pancho Villa. More than a million Mexicans died in this decade of destruction. Millions more were uprooted. The country and the people were in ruins. Tranquilidad, porque ya están cansados del 